guys, this is Park from FTC Team 7477, and today we're going to be talking about gamepad input and how to use your gamepad in FTC programming. So, during the teleop, you're allowed to use two different gamepads or controllers for two drivers, and you in code you have to map your gamepad controls to actual functions on your robot. So today we're going to be talking about how to do that. So, for starters, to initial to tell which game tell the code which gamepad you're using, you can either use gamepad one or gamepad two, and of course the gamepad one corresponds to gamepad the dri driver one gamepad, and gamepad two corresponds to driver two's gamepad. So when you when you type in gamepad one, if you type in dot, you'll see all the possible controls on here. Um all the possible controls on here. So there's some for the PS4 controllers, like these ones, um, the touchpad, the triangle stuff, so that's all PS4 controller. And all this stuff is all, um, for both. And there's also some stuff exclusively for the Logitech controllers, such as B and A. So depending on which controller you're using, you're gonna be choosing the controls that are on your controller. Anyway. The, what, the way this works is there's two types of controls on the gamepad. There's button controls and bo double controls. So the button controls are buttons that turn true or false depending on if they're pressed. And if you see this list, the button controls are all the ones that have Boolean next to their name. What that means is it's going to return true or false if it's pressed or not. So if I initialize a Boolean right here, and I say pressed equals gamepad 1.a. This boolean will be true when gamepad 1.a is pressed, or it'll be false when gamepad 1.a is not pressed. So therefore, if I want a function to do something when gamepad 1.a is pressed, I can create an if statement and say gamepad 1.a. And what that will do is it acts as a boolean It'll be true if gamepad 1.a is pressed and false if gamepad 1.a is not pressed. And if I do that, I can say, let's initialize a servo here, like we learned in the previous video. And I'm just going to name it servo1. I can just servo1.setPosition1. And let's say I want to alternate between two positions with this. I can do another statement that says if gamepad 1.b instead is pressed, I can set the position to zero. So now when I hit b, the servo position will go to zero. And when I hit a, the servo position will go to one. And it'll be kind of like a toggle. And that is for, again, you can do that with any button, boolean control, so d-pad up, b, a, back, circle, these are all, these ones are PS4, but d-pad down, d-pad left, d-pad right, the bumpers, the the sticks are actually buttons that you could use also. So again, that is all button controls. Now there's another type called a float variable output, and that's things like your, uh, that's things like your trigger, if you see here, the right trigger has float next to it, meaning it returns a float, not a boolean. And also things like your left stick or your joysticks. Your joysticks, all of all axes of your joysticks have float values that they return. So what that means is for your triggers, it's a value from zero through one depending on how how far they're pressed. So if you press it all the way, it'll return one. If it's like sort of midway, it'll be around 0 0.5. The joysticks, it depends on in which direction you're moving them. So there's actually, if you look, there are, there are, there are four different act, four different axes for um, just the joysticks. There's left stick Y, which is the left stick up and down. There's left stick X, which is the left stick right and left. There's right stick X, which are the right stick right and left, and there's right stick Y, which are the right stick up and down. Don't get confused with the left stick and right stick buttons. 
because on the Logitech controllers, you can press down on the stick and that counts as a button. So, anyway, so I, for this one, I can initialize a double variable. And let's call it joystick. And I can set this equal to my gamepad one dot, I can set it to any of my sticks. So if I just did left stick Y, now the joystick has the value of gamepad one dot left stick Y. If I move it left, it will return a negative value. If I move it right, it will return a positive value. Now, sorry, this is Y. So if it's X, left will return a negative value and right will return a positive value. Now I can also do the Y axis. And there's something um, different about the y-axis that you should note down is the fact that if I move this, if I move the joystick up, it'll actually register as a negative value, and if I move the joystick down, it'll actually register as a positive value. So this can throw off drivers a bit, especially if you're using the joysticks for driving. So something that most teams do is multiply your gamepad left stick, your y-axis output on both sticks by negative one. So it's more intuitive that going up will have a positive power and going down will have a negative power. So now that we talked about this, the, the, all the joysticks and triggers, we can try setting power to a motor using just the trigger or joystick value. So let's say, let's initialize a motor now. Let's initialize a DC motor. So now we have a DC motor initialized, motor one. So I can set it to a power actually, depending on what the the value is for the gamepad. So all I need to do is motor one dot set power, gamepad one dot left stick X. And what this will do is it will set motor one to a power corresponding to where the left stick X is. So if it's if you have it all the way right, it'll set it to a power of 1. If you have it all the way left, it'll set it to a power of negative 1. Let's say I do something like this. This time I'll use gamepad 2 just to show what gamepad 2 is. It's the same thing, just gamepad 2. And if I use the left stick Y, remember I want to multiply this by negative 1 to have a more intuitive power setting. So now when I move it up, it will set a power of 1. And when I move it down, it'll set a power of negative 1. So oftentimes, one thing we see is that you might fill up your bud, and you might just want another button, but you don't have any buttons left. And there's ways that you can use the trigger and joystick as actual buttons instead of double output. And the way you can do that, it's pretty simple, is you can create a Boolean statement called, let's call it is pressed, that can simulate a button condition for the trigger. So let's call, we'll set is pressed, equal to if gamepad one dot right trigger is greater than a small value, let's say 0 0.05. That means if I even have gamepad one dot right trigger pressed a little bit, it will it will register as is pressed, meaning it's kind of treating it as a button. So then I can just do if is pressed, then I can set a servo position to 0 0.5. So that'll work out just like a button. Right. So now there's one other thing that if you're using two, oftentimes it's when you're using two different buttons to control the same module and a toggle, you can get it mixed up often. And it's kind of hard to keep track of. So what I recommend is that you use the same button for, for a toggle. And there's a way, there's a, there's a way to do that that can be kind of confusing to teams. So I'll talk about it right now. Basically, the problem is that if I just did something like this, gamepad1.a, and toggled it here, so what I would want to do is create a Boolean. Let's, let's say we're moving a servo up and down if it's 0 or 1. So let's say a Boolean is down equals true, meaning the servo is starting at the down position. 
and I want to switch it. I want to toggle it for every time that gamepad one dot a is pressed. I could do is down equals not is down, and what this does is it just changes. If it's true, it'll change it to false. If it's false, it'll change it to true. And now I can do if is down and then create an else statement here. But basically, so this will move it to the target value. So currently it's down. If I press gamepad1.a, is down will become false. And I move, that means I want to move it up. So the else condition would be moving up. Would be moving up. So let's call it servo one dot set position one and let's say this is moving up and if it's down you want to move it down that means it was up and you want to move it down so that would be servo one the set position zero moving down okay so there's pretty clear reason as to why this wouldn't work it's because if you notice, this is all in a loop while op mode is active. And this loop is very, very fast. It repeats every couple of milliseconds. So when you press the gamepad 1.a, it's actually not registering as one press. It'll register as multiple presses. And every single like time this loop runs, it will see that you have pressed gamepad 1.a. Even though you just pressed it for a bit, the computer will register it as multiple presses. And what that will do is, Okay, I'm down, so now I press gamepad 1.a, and I'm going to move up. But the loop will repeat within a couple milliseconds, and gamepad 1.a will still be pressed. So then it'll say, okay, I'm up, and I want to move down. And it'll keep on doing that. I'll move down to up, up to down for, like, as long as you have the button pressed because of how fast the loop is repeating. So this will cause the servo to, instead of moving to any position, it's just going to jitter up and down, up and down. It's just going to jitter. So the way we're going to fix this is we're going to initialize two variables. Go with me here because I'm going to initialize the two variables first and then explain it. We're going to initialize two variables, one called last cycle and set to false, and one called current cycle or current cycle and set that to false. And now what we want to do is I'm going to code it here and then I'll explain it. So I'm going to set last cycle equal to cur cycle and set cur cycle equal to gamepad 1.a and then I'm going to say if cur cycle and not last cycle okay so this I'm guessing this is a bit confusing for you but let me explain it so I have two booleans last cycle and current cycle and to start I set them both to false now before I check if current cycle is equal to game if gamepad one a is pressed i set last cycle equal to current cycle so let's see so now both of them are equal to false still now current cycle equals gamepad one a and this is after i set last cycle equal to current cycle so let's say they're both false but now i've pressed gamepad one a so now these will register false but if i have gamepad one a pressed then the next line will set current cycle equal to true and last cycle equal to false. And that's what this if statement checks for. Current cycle equals current cycle is true and last cycle is false, which is the condition that was given on the first press. And then the code will run. Now the next time, the next loop, current cycle is already equal to true. So last cycle will be set to true also because last cycle equals the current cycle. This time they'll both be true. So now, when I go down, since gamepad 1.a is the next loop, meaning you probably won't have your hand off the controller yet, current cycle is true and last cycle is true, so this statement would not be true. So keep on looping. This ensures that this code will only register on the first time you press the button and wait until you let your finger go and then press it again. Thank you for watching. That is it for this video. I hope you guys learned about gamepad input.